Down the years, people have often said that sharks can smell fear, or they may have said to you, don't let a shark smell your fear. I'm not entirely sure when people started saying this, but if you've chatted to someone about sharks before, I imagine it's something you might have heard at some point. It's not just sharks though. Many have claimed that other predators like tigers or bears can also detect human fear. Looking specifically at sharks though, when this topic crops up, people often refer to them being able to smell it, but is it actually true? Well, today, guys, we're going to take a deeper look into this and try and find out whether sharks really can smell your fear. Welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. The idea for this video actually came from my girlfriend, Laura. I always force her to sit down and watch Shark Bites episodes with me because I'm a bit of a weirdo like that. <laughs> but when we were watching the last Shark Bites episode all about shark vision and the color yellow, check it out here, by the way, she asked me whether sharks could actually smell human fear. And I thought there'd probably be a fair few people out there who at some point in time, have probably asked themselves the same question. It seems to be a phrase that's just been repeated many, many times over the years, and now it's just settled in and people believe it to be true. So is it a myth or is there actually some truth to this? Well, to get to the bottom of it, we're gonna have to don our science caps and have a look into some of the anatomical and sensory biology stuff for sharks. I don't actually have a science cap to don, but what I do have are these holiday themed reindeer antlers with a shark stitched on the top because I told you, I'm a bit of a weirdo. Does it even fit on the camera? <laughs> okay, so sharks do have some pretty amazing senses. They have all the same senses that we have, i.e. sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. That's five, I think. But they also have their wildly impressive sixth sense. I see dead people. No, no, not that kind of sixth sense. Their final sense is electroreception. Right, this thing is already annoying me. It's coming off. <laughs> so when it comes to detecting fear, animals, including sharks, don't have some random telepathic ability to be able to sense it. But instead, they'll use a combination of their existing senses to be able to detect it. Shark species are so varied and different when you compare them to each other, but most will be using a combo of their vision, smell, hearing, or electroreception to detect fear. By the time they're using their touch or taste, it's probably a little bit too late for you or the prey species that they've decided to bite. Despite us studying these animals for the best part of the last century, our knowledge of their sensory systems is still fairly limited. And that's because it's really, really hard to study these animals in their natural environment. So most of the stuff we know about their sensory systems is either from laboratory conditions or from dead specimens but we do know some things about their senses. So let's have a look at their sense of smell first. Unlike humans, sharks have two separate openings for breathing and smelling. They breathe through their gills on either side of their body and then they smell via two nostrils on the front of their face. The nostrils pull water into a nasal cavity where the smells are then picked up. And then in this nasal cavity, there's loads of tissue that's all folded over in a multi-lamella rosette. This rosette varies massively across different shark species, but generally they're all covered in sensory cells that are able to to detect odors in the marine environment. And the surface area of sensory cells on the rosette is huge compared to other fish species. So scientists thought that because of this large surface area, sharks had a much better sense of smell compared to other fish species. It actually turns out that this surface area stuff is pretty disputed in more recent research, despite it logically seeming correct. Larger surface area of sensory cells in the nasal cavity equals better sense of smell. Logically, that sounds correct. But some of those more recent studies have shown that a shark's sense of smell, although impressive compared to humans, is actually around about the same as most other fish species. But what sharks can do with that smell is wild. They're actually able to compare odor concentration and arrival time between each nostril to orient themselves towards the source of that smell, which is insane. So although their detection levels is about the same as other fish species, their ability to navigate to it is impressive. A few people down the years have also tested the age old myth that sharks can smell a single drop of blood in an Olympic sized swimming pool or sharks can smell blood from a mile away. Notably the Mythbusters with their dipping of cut fingers into a tiny pool with juvenile lemon sharks who apparently preferred fish blood, although this wasn't the most rigorous of scientific experiments, I've got to say. And then also Mark Rober did an experiment with the Discovery Channel with surfboards and various blood bags containing urine, fish blood and cow's blood, with the sharks preferring cow's blood over everything else. Neither of these experiments were fantastic and likely wouldn't have passed the grade in a peer-reviewed scientific study, and they didn't really come out with any conclusive evidence either. Oh, Chris, you're such a killjoy. Yes, 
Yes, I am. It turns out the best scientific evidence we have at the moment is that sharks can probably detect a single drop of blood in a volume of water about the size of a backyard swimming pool. So they can probably smell blood from about a few hundred feet away. But there's also loads of other factors that are involved here, like water currents and whether the shark is up or down from that current. So it's all a bit of a wishy-washy one, really. Sharks do have an impressive sense of smell, but perhaps not as impressive as those BTEC documentaries made them out to be. The next one up then is hearing. Shark ears are only externally shown by two small holes on their heads called the endolymphatic ducts. They don't really hear like humans do, so they can't detect sound pressure, but instead they rely on the particle motion of sound. One particle hits another, which hits another, so on and so forth, until it reaches the ear. In the field, sharks are particularly responsive to low frequency, erratically pulsed tones that are very similar to the sound of injured fish, which is about the same frequency as when we humans are splashing around in the water. Next up, then we've got mechanoreception via the lateral line. This sense is present in all fish species and basically it's a series of pores that run down either side of the body. The pores are in contact with the surrounding water and can pick up changes in pressure and water movement from other animals in their vicinity. The lateral line is used for all sorts of things in sharks, including detecting other animals, avoiding predators, and also avoiding objects in their environment that they might accidentally swim into. And then finally, there's electroreception. We speak about the ampullae of Lorenzini all the time here on Shark Bites, but that's just because it's so damn cool. Sharks have thousands of tiny pores scattered around their snout and head. And within these pores are jelly-filled sacs that all form together as an electrical core, functioning essentially as voltage detectors. The ampullae of Lorenzini are highly sensitive to low-frequency, weak electrical fields that are produced by all living things. So using all of these sensory systems, sharks can detect a whole host of things pretty well. They can smell, they can hear, and they can pick up on electrical currents. But what's all this got to do with them being able to detect or smell fear? Well, fear is a pretty complex emotion, especially fear in humans. And a shark's sense of smell isn't designed to be able to detect that emotion. But when humans or animals are frightened, there's a series of events that might unfold that could in theory be detected by a shark. For ease of understanding, we'll use the human example. Lots of things happen in our brain when we're frightened. Stress hormones are released, the brain becomes hyper alert, our pupils dilate and our breathing accelerates. This then causes our heart rate to increase alongside our blood pressure. And an increase in heart rate is undoubtedly going to be able to be picked up by the electroreceptors of sharks. The tiny electrical impulses that are coming from that beating heart are going to be picked up by the ampullae of Lorenzini. Say then the shark comes a little bit closer and for whatever reason, panic sets in. Humans aren't designed to go in the sea. Compared to other marine animals, we're pretty useless. So when we're frightened and panicked in the sea, we might might begin to splash and thrash around in the water. And those vibrations from the splashing are coming out as low frequency pulses that are gonna be picked up by that shark. They can hear it through those endolymphatic ducts and their lateral line is also gonna be able to detect the movements, which probably might bring that shark in a little bit closer. Using their vision as well, they can see that splashing and thrashing thing around in the water and they might end up coming in for a bite. So sharks are using a whole range of their sensory systems when it comes to smelling fear. I think somewhere along the line, the the idea of sharks being able to smell fear has somehow been lost in translation and people just ended up using the term smell. In reality, I'd say that sharks are fully capable of sensing or detecting fear by using their range of different senses that we've spoken about today. I think this is why it's really important to try and educate people as to how they should be in the water around sharks. If more people knew the way to react in that situation, the less frightening the situation becomes. Now, I'm not saying you need to learn how to stop your heart from beating fast because that's just not going to happen. But knowing not to thrash and splash around in the water and to keep your body still in a vertical position and to keep your eyes on the shark are all important things to understand. It's the same situation as if you were going for a hike in the woods in North America in, say, a place that's got loads of bears. You wouldn't just wander off into the woods without first learning some of the things that you have to do if you were to come across a bear. In those situations where there are areas with lots of people and lots of bears, you'll get educated educational signs like this one that explains what to do if a situation arises where you come into contact with a bear. My question is, why do we not have more signs like these 
place in areas where there might be a higher density of sharks. Yeah, okay, there are some shark warning signs on certain beaches that warn swimmers of the months where white sharks are more common, and maybe to not go swimming near seals or at dawn or dusk. But I'm talking about real educational signs with steps that you can take to try and reduce your chances of a negative interaction with that animal. Stuff on the sign should mention some of the things that I've spoken to you guys about today. I don't know, it's just a little thought that's popped into my head. What do you reckon? Right, okay, I'm definitely going off on a tangent now. <laughs> What do you guys reckon about sharks and fear then? Do you think people just got confused somewhere down the line with the terminology of it? Or do you think they're truly capable of actually smelling fear? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. But before you click off, if you want to learn a little bit more about shark senses, then you're going to want to click on this video right here. This is the video we did recently looking at shark vision and whether they're really attracted to the color yellow. In it, you'll see some real world examples of sharks interacting with the color yellow. And we learn whether sharks can even see in color at all. So give it a watch here.